I met her several times that my my subscription would be coming up and I'd be like, oh God, I got I got to do something, I got to do something, I got to do something. So I would take quarters, uh, little, this is the truth. My dad would have some quarters saved up or something like that, rounds of change and all that. And I would take what he had and I would either get money orders or for some odd reason, I don't know how I was able to accomplish it, either get him, trans either <clears throat> get him turned into dollars or something like that or money orders or whatever. And like I said, I don't know how I was able to accomplish it. I would even sometimes physically send the coins, I think, and I was able to resubscribe. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Now, what was funny about when I first started subscribing was they were still doing the the offer of six issues a month or twelve issues a month, and excuse <coughs> me, because. And because of the fact that it was more uh, affordable for me at the time, especially living with my dad, I did the six issue deal. So every six months, I would have to end up get. I'd have to try to find a way to resubscribe. And thankfully, it was either through the social security checks me and my dad would get, or me having to sometimes <laughs> take the money from him, which I do regret, which was the roll of quarters or something, whatever and get it turned into a money order or into cash or whatever or even send the coins themselves and get the subscription restarted again I don't know I don't know how in the world I was able to get away with sending coins sometimes or even dollar bills but it worked it worked now did I get in trouble sometimes with my dad when I did it? of course because he noticed hey what is my cord? what is this? what did you do? <laughs> you know So yeah, I would get in trouble. Thankfully, thankfully I was able to move out on my own again, like I said, but in May of 2000. <coughs> moved to Lawrence, Kansas. And my subscriptions were still going. However, my subscriptions were still being mailed to Oskaloosa, so I had to wait maybe a couple of days before I would get my issue because my dad would have to bring it to me. Now, I don't know if maybe he ripped up open an issue and sometimes would read it when he would have to use the restroom or something. I don't really know. So, yeah, he would sometimes have to bring it to me until finally I was able to get the change of address you know, done. And basically the issues, instead of going straight there, would have that uh, yellow um, uh, sticker on them saying, okay, it's got to go to here now. And... I remember sometimes even getting on the phone with Archie Comics and telling them about the change of address, uh, if they could fix that, and they did, thankfully, because I didn't know, I didn't know their email at the time, but thankfully they did uh, fix uh, the situation, and they said that, I think someone said on the phone, I can't really recall, but basically they told me, that, yeah, it'll be fixed with like the next issue, so, but for right now, whatever issue you're getting is going to go straight to that old address, unless you have a change of address and it heads straight to you. So, uh, long story short, I've talked with them on the phone several times, and, you know, thankfully they've been able to give me their time to, you know, kind of explain situations and, you know, get some orders done from them and stuff like that. <laughs> But yeah, just, I've had a lot of fun with these 200 issues, and <clears throat> and I, I remember when I would live on my own, I would go down the elevator or go down the stairs at the apartment, go to my mailbox, or even after I get off work, I would go to my mailbox, open, the, open it up and see, that the, see, see, the, see if the issue was in there, and it would be, so... There you go. But, you know, there have been several times that, you know, when I would resubscribe, I would think to myself, okay, I'm going to get the, uh, the most current issue as the start of the subscription. And that wouldn't happen. 
So I'd have to go, like what I mentioned at the beginning, I would have to go to places like Mile High or Midtown or even to the comic shops where I lived. And I would have to end up getting the issue up uh, there just so I could keep up. Just so I can keep up my subscription. That was my dog. She's trying to get some uh, fleas or something like that off of her. But, like I said, um, I, I, like I said, I would, well, well yeah, I was, <laughs> so I lost my train of thought there. Um, I would basically, like I said, go to the comic shops around me, maybe even go to Mile High online or, well, well mostly Mile High because they're the only ones I knew about at the time. <clears throat> and I would order, I would order, uh, the issues right then and there so I could keep up what was going on. I mean, Mile High Comics is one of the main reasons I have a majority of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Archie comic series. The only one I'm missing out on is the rest of Moon Saga, or Moon Eyes, the Moon Eyes Saga. I think I just need one or two more issues on that. But the, the point is, like I said, I would do whatever I had to, to keep up while I was waiting for my subscription to restart. And then, when it would, just like when I first subscribed, not only would I get the more current issue, but almost later on, maybe a week or two later, I would get the previous issue to kind of make up for that. And I'd be like, okay. So, <laughs> you know, that, so basically I would end up having two copies of the issue. But, you know, I've had a lot of fun, there's no doubt about it. And, of course, um, as I've mentioned before, and apparently I'm not the only one that's dealt with this, apparently, um, I've also dealt with the f fact that I've had to email Archie Comics, just like other people have, and talk to them and tell them, hey, you know, where's my issue, why isn't it here? I had to do that last year, I had to do that uh, this year. I almost did it a second time this year, but thankfully the issue came. And I don't really know what's going on. I don't know if maybe they're getting so caught up in the upcoming crossover or what they're doing, but it's really, it's, it's really a bad business practice for them to overlook the subscribers. But, yeah, 200 issues, it's, it's hard to believe. And if you want to know, you know, from a archival sense, how long that's been, if you will, if you look, want to look from an archival sense, I think if you were to add in my non-subscription issues, or some of them, It'd be from the start, almost. But if you were to add in my subscriptions, if you will, I think, in a sense, you'd be probably looking between 20 and 24, if not maybe 19 to 24, in the Sonic the Hitchhawk archive series around that time frame, which is pretty surprising. Which is pretty surprising, <clears throat> to say the least, because I'll give, you, I'll give you an idea of how long I've been officially subscribing to this comic. Officially, with issue 72, for 200 issues officially, I subscribed to this comic when Prince Elysis Sally's brother first debuted. That's how long I've been going. Yeah, when he first debuted was when I started officially subscribing. Reading-wise, like I told you at the beginning, was almost from the very beginning. 
and basically more trying to keep in line continuity wise and all that was Endgame. Endgame really set the tone for me there. And then, like I said, finally just decided to subscribe and, you know, just go with it from there. Go, and, like I said, the rest is history. Excuse me. And it's through these subscriptions, and I'll tell you this, during the subscription run of 200 issues, I've also had a chance to go back and order the yearly packs that they still do to this day, which basically is all 12 issues for every year. And because of that, I was able to get the run of, what was it, night, what was it, I think, wasn't 20 to, wasn't 20 to, tw wasn't 20, wasn't issue 20 to 31, no. Um, that was, it was more along the run of, I think it was 32 to 30 to 43 was the first run, then 44 to uh, 45 was the other run. So, yeah, I was able to start doing that, so that way I'd be more up to date and really be like, okay, I can go back and read these issues uh, when I need to. So, yeah, I've so yeah, that's basically what's been going on. So that's basically what I've been doing in the, uh, as, along with the 200 issue subscription. And like I said, I've had just a huge, huge run with it. And like I mentioned uh, during this video, the way I first started subscribing financially, like I said, it was either due to the SSI uh, money I would get in or somehow I took whatever I had left off my uh, work check during my vocational run um, and use that. Now, before anybody says anything, let me let me explain something. I know there's going to be some people that are going to try to come out here and cyber bully me for what I said about my Hirschborn situation. This is something that some people deal with. They deal with bowel movements. They deal with a situation to where if they can't, to where if they eat certain things, after a while it's going to make them want to have to go. And And if they don't, they're going to have a problem. This is something that is a medical, this is a medical situation, these are medical situations that can be treated normally. As long as you have the opportunity to go and be able to relieve yourself properly. And again, I know there's going to be some people that are going to try to make fun of that. Well, let me explain something to those people. This disease almost cost me my life back as a baby. I thank the Lord, my parents thank the Lord, that I was able to come, get, I was able to come through that. I was able to make, make it through that. So before, so let me just put it this way. Anybody that's watched this video, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about how would you feel if you were put in this similar situation. And you're probably wondering, well, why, how does that affect you through Social Security? <coughs> Well, one, well, one, you know, my job probably has an idea. Not saying they don't. But there are so, several jobs out there that will not hire people that have this kind of an issue. So people like me, because of this issue, <coughs> And because of a lot of the things mentally that I've dealt with as a, chi as a child growing up. Because let me explain something else. Let me explain something else. And I know I'm getting off topic of the video here, but let me explain something else. My mom used to homeschool me. Alright? And instead of homeschooling me for my preschool years and then letting me go to kindergarten and then probably correctly letting me graduate in 1997, she held me back a year or two. She held me back in homeschool, and I didn't go to kindergarten until I was about six, seven years old. And I didn't graduate until 1998. You're looking at somebody, folks, 
that should have graduated had things gone the had things gone the correct way in 1997. But I didn't. That was the unfortunate thing. I did not graduate until 1998. All right? And so mentally, that's part of the situation. It's because of a lot of the things I've dealt with. Heck, I still have random checkups every other year, every few years or so, to see if I'm still eligible and worthy of getting Social Security. All right? Again, it has to do with the fact that I dealt with this as a kid, the Hirschhorn disease, the bowel situation, as well as the fact that I've gone through more crap personally through my life than you can even imagine. Okay? So, with that said, let's get back on topic here. The money I would use, whether it was from the Social Security or whatever I had left over for the voc vocational tech, that is what that is what I used for uh, to start my subscription, which has been running currently now for 200 issues, and I'm proud of that because I look at it this way. I know some people have the problems with the comic. It feels though the comic uh, throughout its years. You know, it's gone through its ups and downs, and right now it's at a it's at a, it's at a point where, you know, many feel it may not even last much longer. I look at it this way. I've been through it through its ups and downs. Okay, I've seen. I've seen this comic. Go from being, you know. I've seen this comic have its downfall. A lot of people would look <clears throat> at that that first world tour arc that that you know Chase knocks around the world arc and let's introduce Nate Morgan arc is probably one of the down points of the comic because it really didn't have much to go with it besides just chasing Nagas. He would say and oh here's a side story of what's going on back in Not All, blah, 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 blah. It didn't really have much going for it in the eyes of many fans. So it had its downfall, but guess what? It always picked itself back up. Endgame, when it came out, was originally supposed to end, end the comic, I guess, according to Ken Penders. But no, it didn't, and it just picked that comic right up. See, it's going to go through its ups and downs, so no doubt about it. But until Sega themselves or even Archie Comics have a mutual uh, agreement to depart and go their separate ways, only then will this comic cease to exist. But I don't think Sega's ever going to do that, because with what's going on with Sega right now, okay, with what's going on with Sega right now, I think they're looking for every piece of financial help they can get. And if the comic is one, if the comic and its spin-offs and its uh, collection sets and archival sets is one, is one huge chunk of that financial pie that they can get, then they're going to leave it be. But, so yeah, I mean, they've had several opportunities to take the comic and cancel it, they never have. Because it's that big financial piece of the pie that helps them out. And you know, for 200 issues, I have read some very interesting stories, very interesting subplots. Heck, let me put it this way. Even, even when I started reading the comic with, with Endgame and, you know, basically being through the subscription and all that, being part of the whole Antoine Bunny thing, I, like many fans, was able to watch Antoine and Bunny's uh, relationship have its ups, have its downs, and then finally culminate in them being married, which still continues on to this day in the new soft, in the uh, new red, in the uh, red carnet rebooted soft or whatever you want to call it, a uh, continuity 